guys hope you're doing great our today's question is range sum query immutable it's an easy question on lead code and involves dynamic programming as one of the possible solutions and i thought it would be a good one to have on the list so the question says given an integer array nums find the sum of the elements between indices i and j i less than equal to j inclusive okay so i and j would be inclusive when it says that find the sum of elements between i and j right for example given is this array and the sum range 0 comma 2 so it means that 0 1 and 2 so the sum of these elements 3 0 and minus 2 which is 1 is the expected output and similarly the other values so you may assume that the array does not change. There are many calls to sum rate function. So it means that this will be called again and again on this array, right? Um, the important thing to understand here is just this, that there will be more frequent calls. At, at the first look, it looks like a very, very simple problem because whenever you get this, you can just run a for loop from that particular index to the j index from i to j just sum up the elements and return the answer but it would take you o of n complexity for each sum range call right so um let's just have a look at the various methods because this is an unsorted array so whatever approaches we can use to solve questions on unsorted array and think about an approach where you can improve the solution from just doing an o of n for each sum range call so please pause the video, have a look and come back. So I think um, here it's quite clear that we need to think about how we can do it dynamically, right? Uh, because finding the sum between any two indices is basically more about, um, you know, um, a problem which we can divide into sub problems and have our handy results right such that we can just use those results without traversing the array again and again and be able to find the answer so um, we'll be using dynamic programming here and what I think we should do uh, as a part of the solution is to for so basically for each index in the array right what we need to do is that we need to find the sum of all the elements in the array before that index, right? So for example, in this array, for minus two, there are no elements before it, so it would be zero. For zero, there is minus two, so it would be minus two. For three, so I've, I've just written the, that down here. Yeah. So, so for minus 2, it would be 0. For 0, <clears throat> it's minus 2. For 3, it's sum of these two. So again, minus 2. For minus 5, it is sum of all these three elements. So 1. For 2, it's the sum of the elements before and so on, right? So now here, as you can see, that since the output that we are trying to create needs to have one element extra, we would need to use a dynamic programming array of one size bigger, right? And why we need to do that is because the question states that we need to find the sum of the elements between the indices inclusive. Now, if you don't do this, um, basically when we, if we store, so, so whenever you have to find, for example, some range 0, 2, right? We would know that at, dp of 3 we have a value which is the sum of all elements before 3 that is 0 to 2 right and at 0 we would know that it has the value of all the elements sum of elements before 0 which is in, in of course nothing 0 so we will just subtract that so for example if you see here if the question says 0, 2, we'll go for dp of 3, which will have 1. 1 minus this will give us the answer 1. If you see 2, 5, so for 5, we'll have to go 5 plus 1, 6. So minus 3 minus 2, right? 2. 
so which is minus 2 so minus 3 minus minus 2 which will give us minus 1 right so that's how we will be able to derive our results in O of 1 complexity. We will have to do this process just once, prepare the dynamic programming array because our array will not change and then we can just use it to get these values like that. So let's just get started with the solution and it will become much more clear. Okay. Hmm. So um, as I said that we need to have an extra um, element in the DP array, right? Um, I'll just create. So now here in problems like these, when you have two functions, right? And one of them is being called again and again, you need to declare your um, collection or array, whatever you're using outside of both the functions so that they're accessible in both of them. So what we'll do is that we'll just do this for the time being because we don't know um, the size of nums. So that's why we cannot like initialize it. We can only declare it, right? And then here we'll initialize it. And plus one, okay? And since we'll always know that dp of zero would be zero because there are no elements before zero, so we just do that. Okay, now let's start the for loop. And we, okay, sorry. Uh, so we start from one, okay? I less than equal to n because we have n plus one elements in dp that we want to populate, right? And then i plus plus, okay. So now dp of i, okay. So the value of dp of i should be what? So you need to think of it as a sub problem because if I am at three, right? And I want to, if I'm populating dp of three, I want to populate it with the sum of elements of zero comma two. And I know that dp of zero one, right? Which is here, that contains the sum of elements before zero, right? So it contains minus two. So if I want to get this sum, I'll just add zero plus dp of this index, and that would go into this index, right? So, so the dp of i minus one plus nums of i minus one, right? So dp of i minus one contains the sum of all the elements before i, um, before i minus 1 and we add nums of i minus 1 to it which gives us the sum of all the elements before i right so we just have to do this okay uh, nums of i minus 1 right we just have to do this and yeah that's all that's all for here and then in some range, what we need to do is that we have to return. Now, you've, you've, you've been uh, given J and I, and as I was saying that the next DP element, right? So J, if J is the index, um, DP of J plus one will have the sum of all elements before J. So what we'll do is that DP of, we'll take J plus one, right? because this is the value of all the elements summed up before, before j plus one, right? So it includes j as well now, and we'll subtract dp of i from it, right? So yeah, this should work, but let's see. Okay. Okay, uh, let's submit it. Fine. So as you can see that we were able to do it with just, um, so you, you can mention that to the interviewer that uh, nums of array would, yes, definitely take O of N time complexity, but the sum 
the sum uh, the the method that from where we want to find the sum that will take o of 1 each time and the space complexity would be o of n as well because we are using a dp array of the same size so i hope you guys find this video helpful if you do please like share and subscribe keep coding and take care guys